Hey everybody, it's Bolshi here back with another Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous build video. Today we're going to be looking at the Frozen Heart. This is my take on a build that uses the Winter Witch Prestige class. This is a cold magic specialist that has really high DCs on its saving throws, does respectable damage, and has some great CC. Let's check it out. Alright, let's take a look at the Winter Witch Prestige class. Now first of all, to even qualify for the Winter Witch Prestige class, you have to reach Knowledge Arcana rank 5. So you need to be taking your Knowledge Arcana. You need to have either a Frost Spirit from Shaman or Winter Patron from Witch. We're going to be playing the Witch class, so we're going to be taking the Winter Patron. And we need to be able to cast third level Divine Spells. Okay. Once you qualify and you get in, you get some really great things. Right off the bat, you get Cold spe Specialization, which increases the DC, the difficulty class of your saving throws of Cold Spells by one, and this increases at 5th and 10th level. So if you finish out the Prestige class, you get plus 3 DC on all Cold Spells. That's phenomenal. It's very hard to increase DCs for spells. Um, you can only increase spell DC by increasing spell level, so casting higher level spells, heighten metamagic, Increasing your casting stat, which is hard to do. There's less spells that buff your casting stat than buff uh, physical stats. So, and also, enemy saving throws scale up really, really fast. So, increasing your spell DCs is hugely important, and the Winter Witch allows us to do that. Also, all of our Winter Witch levels are going to stack with our Witch levels for the purposes of getting new hexes, and also for... Um, getting spells from our patron, so getting our bonus spells from choosing the Winter Patron. We also get, at 3rd level, Winter Witch spells become incredibly cold, increasing their caster level by 1. At 6th level, this increases to 2. Okay, increasing caster level is important. It increases the damage of your spells, because damage is um, usually a function of your caster level. And it also helps us to pass spell resistance checks, which as I say again and again, spell resistance checks are really important in this game because everything has spell resistance. So these things here, cold specialization, freezing cold, these are incredibly good buffs to get from a prestige class. At 8th level we get unearthly cold, and what this does is if you deal cold damage, half of the damage is cold, and then the other half comes from otherworldly power is untyped damage. Now this isn't great for us because we're going to be taking ascendant element cold, so all of our cold damage bypasses immunity automatically. This is not so great, but these other two things are fantastic. Okay, now those are some of the advantages of the Winter Witch Prestige class. The major disadvantage, the major drawback, is that the Winter, that the Witch spell list is absolutely garbage for cold spells. You don't start getting good cold spells up until 6th through ninth level spells. So for a big chunk of the game, if you just go with the Witch spell list, you are really struggling. So our solution to negate or at least mitigate some of these drawbacks of the Winter Witch is to take, first of all, the right archetype. That's very important. And also we're going to take a couple of single level dips in other class classes that are really going to make this build more effective. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the build here. Now our first level is going to be Witch, of course, and we're going to be going with the Leyline Guardian. Now this is really great for us for a couple of reasons. Number one, it is an intelligence-based spontaneous caster. Now this, this fact that this is a spontaneous caster is really going to help to mitigate some of those weaknesses of the Witch spellbook because there's a lot of items in the game that allow um, spontaneous casters to supplement their spellbooks with new spells that normally wouldn't be available to them. So I'll talk about some of those items later when we get into the gear section, but this is crucial. I really don't think you can make a decent Winter Witch without going with a spontaneous caster. Maybe you could do Stigmatized Witch as well, but you know, you already have Ember. And I, don't, I don't want to double up on the exact same archetype. So um, this is the one we're going to go with. I'm going to go with Elf. Elf gives us some great things. It gives us bonuses to Dexterity and Intelligence, our two most important stats. And it also gives us Elven Magic, which gives us a plus two bonus to caster level checks to overcome spell resistance. Spell resistance is a major obstacle in this game, and any bonuses you can get to overcome spell resistance are welcome. We're going to go with the basic heritage. These other two give up Elven Magic, so we definitely don't want those. And, you know, I want my Witch to brew potions, so I'm going with the Scholar Divine um, background. That gives us bonus uh, brew potions as a bonus feat. Here's our uh, starting ability score spread. 8 strength, 16 dexterity. We are going to be casting some ray spells, so we want to have this bonus to hit. 12 constitution, 
19 intelligence. This is our casting set. This is what we're going to be increasing every level. Wisdom for saves, charisma, because... Um, actually, I forgot to mention this. The Leyline Guardian has this pretty cool ability called Conduit Surge. And uh, three times plus your charisma modifier a day, you can kind of augment a spell so that it increases its caster level by 1d4 minus 1. So this is, this is nice. It's a nice little bonus. The increased caster level will increase damage. It will also increase your chances of passing spell resistance. So that's a, a nice little buff. And it's a swift action, so it doesn't hurt. Skills. Um, since I want to brew potions, knowledge world is going to be important for me. Um, you can pick whatever skills you want, though. Our level one feat is going to be point blank shot. This is for our raise and um, ranged attack rolls here. Our patron. Now, unfortunately, in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, if you want to be a winter witch, you have to take the winter patron. And that's really unfortunate because elements would be so good. This would be so good. Owlcat, please give me at least second patron because this bonus spell list would alleviate like all the, the drawbacks of going Winter Witch, of all the, uh, the, the weaknesses of the Witch spell list. So if we could just take a second patron, that would make this so much easier to do. But in any case, we're going to go Winter. It does give us some great things. It gives us Snowball as a bonus spell, so we don't have to pick that up ourselves. Um, resist Fire, Protection from Fire, useless. Ice Storm, mm, decent. Icy Prison is very good. It's a good single target CC. If we got mass Icy Prison, I would actually be completely happy with this, but we don't. Cold Ice Strike is great. Ice Body, Polar Ray, very good spells. Polar Ray is a, a very high damage um, ranged attack, so we're going to be using that. Now, we do get um, Snowball for free at level 2, so I'm not going to waste a spell slot and get that right now. I'm going to go with Burning Hands and Reduce Person. You hit level 2 really fast in this game while you're still in the prologue. You can take whatever deity you want, but Garona is the patron saint of hags and witches, so I went with her. All right, at level two, we are going to take our first single level dip. It's our first of two. We only take two dips. We're going to go cr cross-blooded sorcerer, and the reason why, first of all, let's get our skills. Don't forget, I didn't mention this at the first level, but we do need to bump up our Knowledge Arcana. That's going to be important to get into the Prestige class. Our Bloodlines are important. Our first Bloodline is going to be Elemental Water. And what this allows us to do is... Where does it say it here? Oh, well, it doesn't say it. But what this allows us to do is it allows us to convert all spell damage from any spell we cast to cold damage. And, of course that fits right in with our build. So now we no longer just need to look for cold spells. Any elemental damage can be converted to cold spells and get all of those benefits from the Winter Witch Prestige class. So that's our first one. And you know what? Uh, we also get a bonus feat. And at this point, we're going to take Spell Focus Conjuration. All we're really casting at this point is Snowball. So that's a Conjuration spell. We also get Glitter Dust in at fourth level. So. In the beginning, conjuration spells are really important. Also, neither uh, Snowball nor Glitter Dust is affected by spell resistance, so that's why I'm not going to go with spell penetration first. At this point in the game, you don't need spell penetration. We're also going to take Draconic Bloodline White, and this is going to allow us to add one point of damage per die rolled on all of our, uh, all of our cold damage spells. Now, for a single level dip, we get a bonus fee, we get to turn all of our damage into cold, and we get plus one damage per um, die rolled. So, a really strong dip here. And you know what? I'm also going to take Snowball here, just so I can get more Snowballs to cast per day. At level three, we go back into Leyline Guardian. Get your skills up. Our feat at level 3 is going to be Precise Shot, so that we can throw those snowballs into melee without taking the minus 4 penalty to our attack rolls. Our first hex is going to be Evil Eye. Evil Eye allows us to apply a negative 2 penalty to AC, ability checks, saving throws, attack rolls, or skill checks. Uh, we get to choose one of those things. Now, this is kind of part of, you know, being a good witch, is getting your hexes out and cackling to extend them. Um, so we're going to be doing that a lot, and this is the first hex that we can cackle and keep up. So this is going to be a nice little addition to the damage and the CC that this class is going to bring. 
At level four, Leyline Guardian, increase your intelligence. All of our ability score increases are going into intelligence. Oh, I have more skills here. Whatever you want there. We get another first level spell. Now at this point, I'm gonna go with Unbreakable Heart. It's a great buff and it really saves, the, uh, saves your party from time to time. We already have Snowball for damage and Burning Hands for AoE. Reduce Person for ourself. Um, you know, Mage Armor, I'm not gonna get that on a Spontaneous Caster. I'll just use Potions, so we'll go with that. All right, at level five, get our skills out of the way. Oops. Our feat at level five is going to be Greater Spell Focus Conjuration. Now, at this point in the game, pretty much all you're doing is throwing snowballs and glitter dust. And those are both conjuration spells. They both have saving throws that we want to land. So this is a good investment. They also both ignore spell resistance, which is why we haven't picked up spell penetration yet. Our hex is now gonna be Cackle, so we can keep that evil eye up longer. And of course, our second level spell is going to be Glitter Dust. Now, there's not a lot of options here. You can see there's one evocation spell that does energy damage. It does fire damage, which we could turn into cold, and we will pick this up, but Glitter Dust is definitely the better spell to choose at this point. Glitter Dust is an AoE flash of glitter that blinds enemies that fail a will save, and blind is just one of the strongest debuffs in the game, in my opinion. At level six, we're going to take another level of Leyline Guardian. We are not eligible for Winter Witch just yet because we don't have third level spells yet. Okay, our next first level spell, at this point we have most of the good ones. If you wanted to get, you know, Summon Monster for, for Battlefield Fodder, I don't think you're going to be casting any of these. Maybe Enlarge for your melee. And our second level spell, I'm going to go ahead and pick up Molten Orb just so I can turn this into cold damage and benefit from that later. And for right now, 2d6 is not bad. This will get outpaced really fast, but for right now, 2d6 and some burning damage is not too bad. At level 7, see, we still don't qualify for Winter Witch. We can't cast our third level spells just yet, so we're going to go Leyline Guardian again. Our feet at level 7, now we're getting evocation spells, now we're going to take spell penetration to help us pass those resistance checks. And our hex at this point is going to be protective luck. This is something we can toss onto our tank or our melee characters that are getting targeted, and every attacker must roll twice and take the worst result whenever they make an attack roll, and this can be extended indefinitely with cackle. So we will be auto-casting cackle throwing snowballs, and keeping buffs up like this on our party. And at third level, we get our first real blasting spell, Lightning Bolt. And we can change this to cold damage with our Bloodline Arcana. So we're going to go ahead and take this. At level 8, we're going to take another level of Leyline Go. What am I talking about? No, we're not. We're now eligible for Winter Witch. So there we go. Now we can jump into the Winter Witch. Get our intelligence up, get our skills, and we choose that we want to merge our spellbook. So now all of our winter witch levels increase our regular witch levels, and we get that nice cold specialization. Now we're going to finish out the winter witch class. We're going to take all 10 levels. So that's what we're going to do with our next 10 levels. Our feat at this point is going to be Greater Spell Pen. Since we have evocation spells now that need to pass spell resistance checks, we're gonna go ahead and get our Greater Spell Penetration. Our Hex at level 10 is going to be Vulnerability Curse. This makes enemies vulnerable to energy damage, which means they take a time and a half as much damage as they normally would. And it also suppresses energy, uh, any energy resistance or immunities that the target has. Now, that's not terribly important because we're going to be taking Ascendant Element cold at this point in the game. So all of our cold damage bypasses uh, resistance and immunity. But being vulnerable to damage is really nice. That increases damage by 50%. We get another first level spell. And I believe I'm going to go with maybe re Remove Sickness. We already have what we're going to be casting at first level. Um, snowball is so good, you're not going to be casting a whole lot else. Um, at this point, we get another second level spell. This is up to you. Eventually, we are going to be um, investing in necromancy later in the game when we do our Lich spellbook merge. So you might want to take blindness. It targets a different save than Glitter Dust, and it also is permanent. 
So that's a very strong spell. If you need some supplemental healing, maybe cure moderate wounds. Our third, next third level spell, now this is just for flavor, really. I'm going to go with Bestow Curse. Um, I like to have my witches cursing things. Um, it's also really good. It gives you a minus four penalty on attack rolls, saves, ability checks, skill checks. I mean, Deterioration is probably the one you'd go with, and it's permanent. So once we invest in Necromancy um, spell focus, that will be really strong as well. More levels in Winter Witch at level 10. Now, our fourth level spells, and this is where we start to see the real weaknesses of the Witch class. There's not a whole lot here that's going to benefit our particular build that does cold damage. Um, we get Ice Storm for free from our patron next level, so we're not going to take this. Um, I would probably go with Innervation. This is a ranged touch attack that gives the target 1d4 temporary negative levels. Very strong. We also pick up Freezing Cold, so our caster level for cold spells is increased by 1. Our next level goes into Witch. Our feat at 11th level is we are going to take Spell Focus, Evocation. Now, at this point in the game, it's hard for me to really talk about the gear pro progression as you're going through the game, but definitely by level 11, you've picked up the ring Red Salamander. You can buy it from, I think his name is Vasily Rathamus or something like that, from your camp, your war camp. And I it's like 30,000 gold, but it gives you a bunch of fire spells. So those fire spells we can convert to cold damage, and they're all evocation. So we're going to take spell focus evocation so that we can pass those saving throw checks. And we are going to take Misfortune here as our Hex. Um, this Hex is somebody, and they have to roll twice and take the worst result for pretty much any d20 roll. It can also be Cackled to increase the duration. At this point, I'm probably going to start picking up some Cures, some uh, Supplemental spells. Maybe Cure, maybe Bone Shaker. Even Web is not bad. We are going to take selective metamagic late in the game, so throwing down a, um, a web is not a bad idea. But one of those. And I'm also going to pick up Cure Serious Wounds. Because we have Lightning Bolt, we have Fireball from our ring, we're going to get other things that make uh, third level spells our choices easier. At this point, I'm going to pick up Fear. We are going to be investing in Necromancy spells. Death Ward, Cure Critical Wounds are good as well. Next level goes into Winter Witch. Get a bunch of skill points here because we're increasing our intelligence. At fifth level, our spells are going to be, let's see here, I'm going to go with Cave Fangs. Now, Cave Fangs, because we're invested in Conjuration, this is kind of an interesting spell. You cast it, you get a buff, and while you have the buff, you can, as a free action, drop stalactites or stalagmites. The stalagmites will make people fall down, and it makes the area um, difficult terrain, so they move slowly. That's really great. Um, stalactites kind of pin things in place and entangle them. You can cast this as a free action. So every round, you can cast a spell, you can cackle, and you can drop cave fangs. Now, technically, because it's a free action, you could drop 20 of these in one round, but I limit myself to one because it just feels cheesy otherwise. Can be game-breaking. I believe we also picked up our next level of cold specialization. So our cold spells are now doing, um, their DC is too higher. And our next feat is going to be 13. We're going to go greater spell focus. Where's my greater spell focus? Greater spell focus, evocation. Ignore that thumbs down. We do want this. And our Hex at level 13 is going to be, we're going to take Regenerative Sinew here. We're now getting our um, Major Hexes, so we can take this. This gives us, uh, this heals up to four points of ability damage from two ability scores. So that's really good. I'll take Bone Shaker here. And our next spell, mm, Delay Poison is good. Heroism, if you need it, one of these. I'm going to go with my Cure first. We'll just pick up Baleful Polymorph for fun. And move on. So 
skills out of the way, we get six level spells. At sixth level, if you don't have it, I would take Greater Heroism. We're getting our blasting spells from items and from our patron spells. We get Cold Ice Strike at this level from our patron, so um, don't get that. We get Hellfire Ray from a ring, so we don't need to pick this up. I'm going to get Dispel Magic. Greater Heroism and Dispel Magic are my two choices here. Continuing on with Winter Witch. Our feet is going to be, and now we're really kind of leaning into the whole Winter Witch idea, and I'm going to go with Elemental Focus, Cold. We're really going to be increasing the DCs of our Cold spells here. And our Hex is going to be Fortune. Uh, this spell, if you cast it on an ally, they only get to benefit from it once a day, but if you cast it on an ally, you can cackle to keep it up indefinitely, and they get to reroll any ability check, attack roll, saving throw twice, and take the better result. So this is really good for um, builds that are revolved around critical strikes, things like that. I'm going to take Death Ward. You can see that we got Cold Ice Strike from our patron. And... You know, I think I'm going to pick up some summons. We don't really have a lot of will saves, so maybe a summon, maybe hold monster, maybe break enchantment is nice to have. I'll grab the summon. And now I'm going to pick up greater heroism. All right, at level 16, we're going to take another level of Winter Witch, increase our intelligence, get our skills out of the way. And we get a seventh level spell here. Um... It's important to note that I do have on the items that uh, you probably will have it around this point. You'll definitely have the fire ring and the uh, thunder, the lightning bracers. This is the red salamander and this is the um, storm lord's resolve. So I'm going to start showing what spells you'll have from those items now. Let's take a look. That means that we don't need chain lightning. We get it at sixth level by using those bracers. And if you pick it up here at seventh, um, it'll overwrite your sixth level spell. So don't do that. You just want to keep your sixth level chain lightning. If you have plans for those bracers, the, the lightning bracers for somebody else, then maybe you want to pick up chain lightning here, but I wouldn't. Okay, I'm going to pick up Bestow Greater Curse. At level 17, we're going to take our last level of the Winter Witch. And our feat is going to be Greater Elemental Focus Cold. We're really going to Lean into that Winter Witch theme here. And let's see here. And, you know, going along with that theme, we've got Hoarfrost. This is kind of a, I don't know if this spell is actually that great as in terms of power gaming, but it is cool. Uh, it says the target is rhymed with a shell of frost needles that slowly work their way into its flesh. The target turns pale and blue and takes one point of constitution damage per minute until it dies. Per minute. That's almost nothing. Why this is in a CRPG, I don't really know, but it's pretty cool for our theme. And we've already picked up the majority of the good hexes, so I'm just going to grab that. Let's see here. Nothing too important there. Our fifth level spells are going to be almost entirely from our patron, Icy Prison, Great Spell, Kona Cold, and Fire Snake. These come from our rings. Sixth level spells, I'm going to pick up True Sing. Again, our sixth level spells, our patron and ring give us Cold Ice Strike. Uh, we get Chain Lightning from the wrist, and we have Hellfire Ray. So all of our blasting spells are completely taken care of. And those items that add spells to Spontaneous Caster Spellbooks are really good. They add great spells. We're going to pick up Heal for seventh level. Moving on, we're going to finish up all of our levels in Leyline Guardian from here on out. We get to pick up an 8th level spell. I think the first spell I'm going to pick up, we get a few spells from items. We get Storm Bolts and Polar Ray. I'm going to pick up Rift of Ruin. We're already invested in Conjuration, and this is a great Conjuration CC spell. Opens up a pit, people fall in, take a ton of damage. More skills here. And to make that pit, and a lot of our spells, actually, to make a lot of our spells even more useful, we are going to pick up the Selective Metamagic. Now you can put this, slap this on any spell, and your teammates will not get hit by it. So you can have Selective Fireball, you can have Selective um, Pits, you can have Selective uh, Poisonous Clouds, things like that. 
Our next seventh level spell is probably going to go with legendary proportions for the buff. Um, I, I like walk through space, it gives you a round per level and buff. And during that time, you can move 30 feet. You can teleport 30 feet as a move action. I kind of like that. It's good for getting out of trouble. And our next 8th level spell. Frightful Aspect is really good if you don't have somebody to uh, auto-intimidate. I like the idea of Death Clutch. I like popping, um, you know, Greater Bestow Curse, Evil Eye, getting somebody's saving throws really low, and then pulling their heart out with Death Clutch. Seems fitting for a witch. And finally, our last level goes into Leyline Guardian. Did I miss a hex? I feel like we didn't get a hex there. We get 10 more points here. It's a good thing about intelligence-based class. You get a lot of skills. And our ninth level spell. Now, um, for us here, we get this Polar Midnight spell from our ring. So you don't need to, uh, you don't need to get that. I would probably go with something, you know, it depends what your party is missing. Whale of the Banshee is actually really good. We are going to be, if you go Lich, I really recommend taking Expanded Arsenal Necromancy. I'll talk about that more during the Mythic Path. So this is a great spell. All right, now on to Mythic Path. I chose to go with the Lich Mythic Path for this, uh, primarily because number one, it's pretty thematic with the Frozen Heart concept of the Winter Witch. Number two, you get to merge your spell books at Mythic Rank 3 with the Lich Spellbook. You get a ton of really great necro necromancy spells, and you also get to add your Mythic Rank to your caster level. So, for example, if you are level 9 and you merge spell books at Mythic Rank 3, you get 9 plus 3, 12 caster levels. You get all the benefits of being a 12th level caster, including things like um, you know getting new spells, your spells doing more damage, spell resistance checks and all those things. So I really do think that Lich is the best choice, especially for the middle of the game. Trickster and Demon are both good choices, but I think they're, they maybe take a little bit longer to get going, especially Trickster. Let's see here. I'm just going to go through Mythic abilities. I went with Abundant Casting at rank 1. At rank 2, I went with Extra Mythic Ability, and I went with Ascendant Element Cold. This allows us to bypass all resistance and immunities to cold damage. Very good for Winter Witch. At Mythic Rank 3, I went with Improved Abundant Casting, Greater Abundant Casting, Elemental Barrage. Now, Elemental, Elemental Barrage sounds like it's not going to be a good thing for us because um, we do so much cold damage, but we have a few spells that do damage over time. If you throw a Firestorm down with your Bloodline Arcana active, it will hit them for frost damage, but then it will burn them round after round for fire damage, and that fire damage will proc Elemental Barrage. There's also a ring that gives us Caustic Eruption, which is an acid spell that does the same exact thing. That's later in the game. I don't know exactly where you get that ring. I think it's in Act uh, 5. But in any case, we're going to have some damage over time that's different, um, different elemental damage, and we can get a lot of use out of this. And finally, at Mythic Rank 9, I kind of ran out of um, Spellcaster abilities, and I went with Last Stand. Uh, when you would die, you become unkillable for two rounds, and this can happen once a day. This is really nice for your squishy characters, especially when you've run out of other options. For Mythic Feats, I traded in my first Mythic Feat, but at Mythic Rank 4, we went with Spell Penetration. Rank 6, I went with Mythic Evocation. This doubles your Spell Focus Feats for Evocation. At Mythic Rank 8, uh, expanded Arsenal Necromancy, so all of those great things that we get for the, our Evocation School are now going to be applied to Necromancy, and that's really important for our Lich spells, not so much for the spells that we chose during uh, leveling up, but for the Lich spells that we got from merging all, our spellbook. And at Mythic Rank 10, I went with Sorceress Reflex. This allows us to cast a spell as a swift action um, every time we roll initiative. We get to cast one spell as a swift action. Really good for getting CC out. For Lich Powers, I went with Withering Life, Magic Devourer, and Eclipse Chill. Eclipse Chill, I wish this three rounds per day multiplied by your Mythic Rank, because it would be so good for us, but for only three rounds a day, it's just not worth it. That's about it for Mythic Path. All right, so here we go. This the build in action at various levels. This is gonna be at level five. At this point in the game, we really just have Snowball, 
and Glitter Dust. Those are our two main spells. We also have Evil Eye and Cackle, though. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to Evil Eye this Barbarian. Okay, he saved, but he still has it up for one round. So we are now going to Auto Cackle. You should be able to Cackle this round. And this is really what you do. There's our Cackle. Okay, so that keeps that up. And now we're going to Glitter Dust. Hopefully, these lands. Okay, it didn't land on him. It landed on him. That's fine. Get our Cackle out. There's Cackle. And he still has, he should still have his um, Evil Eye still going on. And now we're just going to Cackle and throw out. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. I mean, for level 5, critting for 35 damage is not bad. 46 plus 5 damage. That plus 5 is from our cold damage um, bloodline that we took. So we took this guy out pretty handily. And now we are going to Evil Eye. You know, let's Evil Eye AC so this guy's easier to hit for Camilla and me. Oh, Camilla, stay up. Stay up, baby. Cackle. And now we're going to Snowball him. Yikes. Okay, all right, good, good, good. <laughs> I didn't want to die on my demo. But these guys are a little bit more, this might even be, I think I bumped this up to hard, actually. So uh, it's either on core or hard difficulty. And um, these are probably a bit tougher than mobs we would face at level five, I would say, based on my experience with level five gameplay. So, all right, so here we go with a little demo at level 10. Now at level 10, we've got a couple of things. We've got a couple of mythic ranks here. So we're gonna have abundant casting. That means we can spam our spells a little bit more. Uh, we have ascendant element cold. So our cold damage spells are now going to bypass reduction. And also at this point in the game, you should have picked up the red salamander. The red salamander is a ring that gives you a bunch of really cool fire spells. At this point, we can only cast fireball and controlled fireball, but those are pretty solid. So here's what play is gonna look like. I am gonna put protective luck on Camilla. Auto cackle. Don't forget that's part of that's part of the gameplay as a witch. Keeping up those hexes, doing things outside of just casting your spells. So there's our cackle, and now we are going to get out a glitter dust on these two guys. Got this guy, not this guy. Okay, well that's good. At least he's flat-footed. We have our bloodline arcana up, so now we can start blasting. We can get controlled fireballs in here. Wait, that's a molten orb. We could hit these guys with a controlled fireball. We could innervate. We could, you know, let's ice storm. Why not? This hits everybody, so I'll have to do that. Camille's taking a little damage. Now, I think I still cackled. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Waiting for a cackle to come out. There's our cackle, and now we are going to... Let's go ahead and blast these guys with a fireball. This, of course, comes from our ring. Boom. There we go. 45 damage on this guy. And you can see when we go to our um, damage results, that's cold damage. So it bypasses any resistance or immunities, and that's because we have that bloodline arcana going. And now, I think we're just going to go ahead and pelt this guy with some, some snowballs. Come on, get in the game. 50 damage! That's not bad! For a first level spell that you can spam over and over, and it staggers on attack, it has a DC of 20 for the, uh, the stagger effect. I'm not upset at that at all. Alright, that's level 10. Let's keep going. All right, so here's the build in action at around level 15. This is still a level six Camellia, so she might just get disintegrated here. My Mythic Path, I was locked out of Lich for some reason on this. So, you know, this build works for a lot of different Mythic Paths, and um, I am going, I went with Demon here because I was locked out of um, Lich. So let's see what happens here. Now I want Brimarak and Incubus, that's what I want. Okay, so 
The good thing about Demon is that Demonic Rage, even though you only get to use it a few times a day, is really, really strong. So let's go ahead and fight some giants. Get in there, Camellia. Do your best, Camellia. I believe in you. Let's get productive luck on her. Okay, auto cackle. And hey, hey, hey. He's up there, Ulsa. Yikes. Okay, so she's got protective luck at least. I don't know what good it's going to do. Let's get this guy frozen. Yes, it landed. Okay, let's see. What else do we have here? Um, you know what? I'm going to freeze both of them because Camellia cannot handle this. She's dead. That's fine. She served her purpose. What is happening right now? Teleport out of there. Okay. Pop Rage. Should have done that before. And let's get some damage out here. Because I don't think CC is going to cut it. I didn't hit both of them. Okay. Yikes. I didn't equip my items, so I only have witch spells right now. That's fine. Let's see. This guy's about half dead. Kite. Kite, Elsa. Like your life depended on it. You know, let's see. Since this guy's taking the long route, let's see if I can... Freeze this guy. Yes, I can. Okay. And maybe line them up. Come here, you. There we go. Yeah. And then we'll handle this guy. You know, I forgot to put on my items. So I only have witch spells. I would have a lot more spells. But these, you know, these spells are... What? Hello? What? I guess he was out of rage. But you know, that's the great thing. This is the great thing about the uh, Winter Witch is that my Icy Prison DC for this level is extremely good. Like, look, this guy has plus eight to save and he's CR 12 on core or somewhere between core and hard difficulty. And he is not gonna make that saving throw. He's just not. That's why I'm not close enough. I do like the fact that I'm just running around cackling like a mad woman. Hit him, hit him. Do the thing. Oh, that didn't... He made the saving throw? That's unfortunate. Natural 20. I'm about to die. I am going to teleport across the map here. Oh, what just happened there? Oh, my aspect of the Brimarek. Nice. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. That's level 15 without Lich Spells. I think with Lich Spells, it would probably be maybe maybe easier. Also, I didn't have any gear on, so that's level 15. I'm trying to do these demos so people can see that this thing is viable throughout the entire game. It's a different play style, and as, the, as, you're, you know, as you level up and you get new Mythic ranks, your play style has to evolve, but it's definitely, definitely viable and fun. All right, that's the build. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.